Quick, imagine this. You've got the perfect plan for your business. You've got everything figured out. You know exactly what you need to do to execute on the day to get stuff done. And then, boom, out of nowhere, chaos ensues. Could be an out-of-town neighbor. Could be a phone call that happened. Could be an unexpected bill. Could be that thing that derails your momentum, that holds you back from getting the kind of results you want to get in your business and in your life. Question is, what do you do next? What do you do in that moment? Well, on today's episode of the Daily Dose of Awesome, we're going to be talking about what you might need to do in those moments because guess what? If that's happening to you, it's not just happening to you, it's happening to all of us. Welcome to the real world of entrepreneurship. Hello, my friends. JT DeBolt here with you today for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome, your 15 minutes of inspiration, education, and motivation to help you get your day started off right. And before we jump in here, jump out, let me know where you're tuning in from, and as you do, let me say good morning. Good afternoon and good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble. Thanks for joining us here each and every single Monday through Friday at 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. <laughs> 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome. Becky Hall in the house. What's happening? Sharon Crop, great to see you. Richard and Joanna, great to see you as well. Awesome to see you guys jo joining in here. Lots of folks jumping in. Love you guys. Stoked to be here on the Daily Dose. It is always a privilege and an honor. And uh, it's been a minute and a half since I've been on this, and I wanted to kind of address something that comes up quite a bit, especially in the mentorship program that we run here with the Fast Track program in EMP, but it applies to literally any entrepreneur in any walk of life. Doesn't matter how, how uh, seasoned you are, if you've been around the block a few times, if this is your first business or the 1500th business you've been in, <laughs> you are gonna run into chaos. You're gonna have disaster strike. There are gonna be times when things happen at the most inopportune time, and you're gonna say, well, the timing isn't perfect. In fact, the timing is extremely inconvenient. This couldn't have happened at a worse time. And I wanna let you know, that's how it's designed. Unfortunately, it seems to be the way uh, you know, just sort of life goes in general, but specifically in business. So I'm going to go back to September of 2008. September of 2008, I had just got out of the United States Navy. I'd been in the Navy for 12 and a half years, living out a childhood dream. And my wife and I had made the decision to uh, leave the military. She was also in the military. We flew together. She was my navigator. Uh, so go ahead and, you know, think about any, you know, naval aviation movie reference you want, Maverick and Goose, whatever works for you. That's what my wife and I, uh, you know, that's how we met. We met in the Navy flying as aviators. And so uh, when I got out, she'd already been out for a year. Uh, she was building her network marketing business and I got out to kind of help her along that path. And it started the path for me to become a speaker, an author of actual published author of a book and uh, go on to build my own coaching practice, which eventually led me here to working with EMP as the director of leadership development. I share this with you because that was a very interesting time for me. We had just transitioned out of the military. I'd been in a military life for 12 and a half years, basically a third of my life at that point. And what was interesting about it is all of a sudden overnight, I had to shift my priorities and become this stay at home dad and this you know at home business builder. And what's interesting about it is I felt completely like a fish out of water. This was a dream that most people, even to this day, maybe some of you, are working toward. Out of curiosity, go ahead and type a one in the chat box if you are still working a J-O-B, but working toward becoming a full-time entrepreneur work, working from home. So if you're a full-time, uh, you work for somebody else, you got a J-O-B, maybe it's part-time too, that's fine, but you got a J-O-B and you're working toward being a full-time entrepreneur, dial a one in the chat box. I wanna see who we got on board. Lee Ryan in the house, Zach Brown, what's going on, man? Jennifer Miller. Great to see you. Jennifer King, what's happening, girlfriend? Good to see you. Laura Gracie, Cherie Woodard. Great to see all my friends coming in. Man, lots of people dialing in here. If I don't say hi to you, I'm saying hi to you anyway. I love you guys. Uh, it's happening. Okay, so I'm seeing some ones dial in here, which tells me you guys still have a J-O-B. Awesome. And you're building your business so that you can perhaps make that transition from that J-O-B. And here's the cool part. I want to let you know that my story might be slightly different than yours. I was a full-time naval aviator, right? So I was working about 70 hours a week. Uh, it was my dream job. I loved my job. It was amazing. I was not running away from it. I didn't hate it. Um, it was my dream job. However, I was about to get deployed for the sixth time, and it would have been my fourth combat deployment. 
and we had just had our baby boy, Max, and I started to see that there was a shift in my priorities as not just a human being, but also as a man and as a father. I just knew, hey, it was time for me to make this move, and also I wanted to take on this challenge of entrepreneurship. So I wasn't running away from my job, and I'm not saying anybody is, and I wasn't leaving it out of spite. Some people, man, you got you know, just jobs that you completely hate, and I get that. In this case, in my case, that wasn't the case. I loved what I was doing. So it was even a little bit more of an emotional uh, kind of transaction or emotional kind of move when I left the US military to go build my business. When I did that, I found the very next day, I woke up early just like I normally did. I had this structured life being in the military and all of a sudden my wife goes, hey, you know, you could take it easy. Why don't you take Max to the, to the park? Go to the park and, and hang out and be, you know, be with him and just you know, be that stay at home dad. You've earned this. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I put Max, or he, at the time he's just a little baby, in the stroller and walked him four blocks down to the park. And there we are. It's me and about six women. Uh, they were with their kids and they're looking at me because it was uncommon at that time for a guy to be a stay-at-home dad or to you know work from home or build a home uh, business from home. And so they were kind of looking at me like I was some jobless homeless guy with a kid. And the one woman goes, hey, how's it going? I'm like, good. you know. And she's like, uh, do you work nights or whatever? And I said, no, actually, I don't have a job. I have my own business. And so it kind of <laughs> it was one of those like kind of weird moments where I was like, uh, I don't really know what I do. And that's an important piece that I want to share with you. And the reason that I use the story here is, is to emphasize this point. You have to understand that chaos is going to happen to you in your business, no matter if you're brand new at it or if you've been around the block. The key to it is to have a sense of ownership of the business itself, a sense of ownership. And at that point in my life, I hadn't had that. My identity was so attached to being an employee of the United States government that I wasn't really in ownership mode. I wasn't in business ownership mode, which made the next part of this story even worse. Two days later, we were building our business and we had something happen where, you know, somebody that we had trusted in our business let us down. They kind of turned their back on us and it was painful and it was frustrating and I was angry because I wasn't used to that being in the military. I was used to the camaraderie. I was used to the teamwork. I was used to everybody having each other's six, you know, having each other's back. And I had this person whom I thought I could trust turn their back on me. And that created a major shift in our, not just our finances and our income, but also in the productivity of our business. If you've ever had this happen where somebody you trusted turned their back on you and it had a huge direct impact on your business, give me a two in the chat box. I want to see how many of you guys can relate to this because it can be super frustrating, right? All of a sudden, there you are, you think everything's humming along. You've got a well-oiled machine and somebody or an outside force throws a wrench into the machine, all right? Um, see let's just see some folks okay so lots of people saying too here's the key part to this in the moment i was upset frustrated pissed off and that's a natural thing so if you ever get there it's okay and this is the first step if the chaos hits in your business the website goes down facebook shuts down your ad something outside of your control happens it's okay to have that emotion in the moment to be upset, pissed off, angry, whatever it is. It's okay. Give yourself 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds at most, 30 seconds at most, to spool up and be pissed off. But understand that whether it's 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, well, however long it is, that is time and energy wasted and gone that you cannot apply to solving the problem. Okay? That's it. And here's the reality about entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not about making money. Entrepreneurship is not about shipping out products. Entrepreneurship is not about changing lives. That stuff's a byproduct. All of that's a byproduct. Entrepreneurship, my friend, pay close attention. Entrepreneurship is about problem solving. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. Entrepreneurship is about problem solving. And if we take that belief system forward, then anything that hits us in the face, it doesn't matter whether it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, doesn't matter if it's in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the holidays, doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the summertime, doesn't matter if it's on your best day or your worst day. If you can say to yourself, my job, my my role as an entrepreneur is not to ship products, is not to change lives, is not to put out websites and blah, blah, blah. That's not your job. Those are byproducts of what you do, okay? And they're important. Your number one job as a professional entrepreneur, whether you're working for somebody else and moonlighting or you're making that transition to being a full-time entrepreneur, 
is to be a problem solver, a brilliant problem solver. And that's what we do here at EMP, at EliteMarketingPro slash AttractionMarketing.com. Our focus is to help you become the most brilliant problem solver you can be. Because if you can learn how to be a great problem solver and deal with the chaos and deal with the disaster and the mayhem and all that crap that comes in at us, that it happens to all every single entrepreneur, you will rise above all of it and actually win the game. I want to also dispel one quick rumor. There's this rumor going around or there's this, this, this kind of percentage that people like to throw around that 95% of small businesses or new businesses fail within the first five years. I don't even know if that number is accurate anymore. Maybe it is. And personally, I don't care nor should you. The question that you need to be asking yourself is, what is it I need to do right here, right now, and what is it I need to do on a daily, consistent basis to ensure that I'm not in that percentage, that I'm in the percentage of winners? Now, I told you we got out in 2008, or at least officially, both my wife and I were out of the Navy in 2008. Here we are in 2009. For 11 years, I haven't had a job. I've never worked for somebody else. Now, I've worked with people like EMP, right? It's a partnership. But my point is, I've never had to go to a job before. I've always worked for myself, had my own business. That's a pretty awesome track record, 11 years. Now, I can tell you this, it's been a tumultuous 11 years at times. There are times where both my wife and I were pulling our hair out, looking at each other from across the dinner table going, how the heck are we going to do this? How are we going to pay the rent? How are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to make the, uh, you know, how are we going to buy groceries? How are we going to keep our beautiful kids going in school and do all the things we said we wanted to do? And where is this whole freedom thing? time freedom, financial freedom that we were working toward from the very beginning. The reality is sometimes you're going to be on top of the world and sometimes you're going to be at the bottom of the pit, period, end of story. That never changed. The one thing that never changes is the idea of being a great problem solver. So how do we do it? Step one, you got to give yourself that space. Okay. You could be emotional if you need to, but just understand every moment and every ounce of energy that you pour into the being upset, pissed off, angry, frustrated at something outside of your control is moments and energy that are robbed from you actually solving the problem, all right? So deal with the emotion, step one. Step two is to take ownership. There's a big difference between an entrepreneur and a wantrepreneur, all right? Wantrepreneurs are the people that go on Instagram and Facebook and they see all the motivational videos and magazines and memes and pictures and they post them and they're like, live your big dream, right? And they do all that crap. That's a entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is somebody who's too busy working their tail off and building their empire to have time for that kind of stuff. Now listen, I'm not making it out to be wrong. If that's your jam, go for it. If it makes you feel good, great. But understand, that's not building your bank account. It's just not. The stuff that's actually gonna build your business, and I'm being blunt with you and brutally honest, is the, the, is the, the hard stuff that typically is, doesn't feel good. The writing of the ad, the getting live on Facebook when you go, well, I'm shy or I'm not somebody who's good in front of a camera. Guess what? You got to get past that thing. The difference between a entrepreneur and an entrepreneur is ownership. Entrepreneurs are business owners, okay? They are building a business. They're not building a fan following and all this other stuff. That's, that's a piece of building a business. You got to have fans and you got to have people following you and all that kind of stuff on social media. I get it. But the actual business itself comes down to you, the business owner, taking ownership. And it is an attitude. It is also a nature. You have to develop that in your nature, this, this behavior, this habit pattern of saying, I own this thing. I own this business. I own everything that happens to it and everything that happens from it. Now, there are going to be times where you get blindsided. There are going to be times when somebody screws you over. And I've seen some twos in here, which tells me a lot of you have had that happen. And it's going to happen again. I am fortunate, I hate to, tell, hate to have to tell you this, Big Brother JT is going to break the news to you. It's likely going to happen to you again. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't, but it likely will. The question is, how will you respond to it? And that's step number three. Step number one was, the, was control the emotion, right? Step number two was take ownership, and that's an attitude and a behavior. It's also the way of being. It's your nature. So if you say to yourself, I'm not a entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur, which means I'm a business owner and I own everything, you are already winning the game. You have become more bulletproof than anybody else around you simply by making that shift and continually believing that and having that inside you, all right? Step number three, though, is super important because now what we have to do is we have to go, okay, cool. If I'm going to have all this stuff happen to me and it's going to, you know, I'm going to have the attitude that I'm going to move forward, what must I do? This is where we have to do it. And step three is react 
All right, so sorry, respond instead of react. We have to respond instead of react. And I'm gonna tell you what the difference between those two are in just one second. Before I do, I wanna check in with you. How many business owners do I have here? How many folks, give me a three, if you identify as somebody who owns it. And you understand, what I mean by this, it's not just some you know, chest pounding, let's go get some. To truly own stuff means you're willing to accept 100% responsibility. You're not gonna shed blame, you're not gonna say somebody else screwed me over, or my person told me this, my investor said that, my mentor this, my whatever, my upline that. You, that stuff, if you're gonna own, if you're, that's for entrepreneurs, that's for amateurs, right? So for us professionals, true business owners, we accept 100% responsibility. I wanna see the threes in the chat box if you're one of those folks, all right? I see, <laughs> I see a lot of people getting up Getting down with this stuff. Yeah, baby. Three. Respond instead of react, Cherie. Exactly. So I see a lot of threes. Now let's talk about respond versus react. Response, response is where we slow down, think, and put some, put some logic and put some facts behind some stuff. We get the data points first. Reaction is an emotional, uh, you know, sort of how we, how we kind of react to something. So imagine this. It's a dark, stormy night. Think of your hometown, think of where you live. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a specific place, but just some place that you can think of. And you're walking down a street and all of a sudden you see a house, a dark, creepy, vacant house. It hasn't been lived in in years. In fact, in our neighborhood, we used to have one. This house was like vacant for like two years. Somebody tried to buy it and flip it in a real estate deal and it didn't work, so they left it vacant and it was crazy. So it was this kind of like creepy haunted house, right? Like the Munsters or the Adams Family, if you guys ever used to watch those shows. So this creepy looking haunted house or what, you know, we always joked about it being haunted. It wasn't truly haunted. But a house like that. Now, let's say that I say to you, I will give you $1,000 or $10,000 or $50,000 or a million dollars, whatever number will motivate you to stay the night in that house. Now it's pitch black. It's dark. It's raining. You know, thunder and lightning, your typical horror story picture. You're in that house. You're going to take on my challenge and you're in the house. All of a sudden, about an hour into it, you hear the creaking of the floorboards. And it sounds like something is coming towards you, but you can't see. It's pitch dark in this creepy house. And oh, by the way, you don't know the layout of the house because you've never been in it before. So you don't know where the doors are, the exits, the windows. You're just kind of standing there in this big dark room. And then all of a sudden, you feel something grab you on the back of your shoulder. Let me ask you, what are you going to do in that moment? Are you going to go, hmm? I just noticed that there's pressure, slight pressure on my shoulder coming from the back. Like, are you gonna go through that and think, or are you gonna freak out? Now, most people, I'm, I'm just gonna see in the chat box what you guys are saying here. Most people are gonna freak. I would, I, I would at least do something that would be a reaction. I would probably do a physical move, probably something to separate myself from whatever that was or separate that person's or that thing's hand from its body. My point is, is that nobody in their right mind, especially in a situation where they feel off guard or when the chaos ensues or when disaster strikes, most people are going to react emotionally. And that's how come the very first step was to deal with the emotion. And then step two was to say, I'm going to take ownership. Step three is we got to decide to respond versus react. Our next motion cannot be emotion based. Our next motion cannot be emotion based. Make sure you mark that in your mind. Write it down on a piece of paper if you need to be. But here's the key to it. We have to respond as opposed to react. React is emotion-based. Respond is, is intellect-based or, or logic-based. This is where you have to step back and ask yourself these questions that we've been pro providing to you guys for a while now. The three, two, one evaluation that we learned from our mentors, Blair and Melissa Dunkley. What worked, what didn't work, and what might I have to do differently? Now, in the situation of being in a haunted house, somebody grabs you, obviously you're gonna run or separate yourself from the threat. But in your business, when chaos ensues and we're thinking like professional business owners, all right, professional entrepreneurs, we have to separate ourselves emotionally or from the emotion and get logical. All right, so the ad got shut down. What worked about it? All right, you have to come up with three things that worked about that situation. Hey, the fact that you had an ad running is awesome. The fact that you posted it and it was actually live, that's a win too, all right? And the fact that it got shut down, now you have something that you can learn from. Believe it or not, the fact that it got shut down could be a good thing. Maybe it's the thing that you needed to tweak the ad so that it actually becomes profitable, right? Can you imagine running an ad that never gets shut down but also it doesn't become profitable? That would kind of suck, right? And it happens. 
And it doesn't mean that you have to get your ad shut down for it to become profitable, but take a look at something happening. And by the way, I'm not trying to be this fuzzy woo woo, everything's positive, everything is awesome type of, you know that about me by now, or at least you better, right? You know that I'm about pragmatism. You know that I'm about facts. You know I'm about kicking ass, taking names and making, get, accomplishing the mission. But you have to be able to look and see what worked about this thing and come up with at least three of them. Step two, what are the two things that didn't work? Two big ones. Now, it's very easy in our minds to become super pessimistic or to focus on what didn't work and go, well, this didn't work and that didn't work. I want to know the two zingers, right? The two, like the ones that really landed, the big two that, that caused this thing to happen in the first place. What didn't work about this? And then, of course, one thing you might have to do right now. And you might have to go even a step further and go, what's one thing I might have to do completely differently? What's something I might have to do that's completely different from anything I've done in the past in order to get past the chaos or get past the, 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 the disaster that has hit in your business? Realize this. This is really what it comes down to about being a professional entrepreneur. Number one, deal with the emotion. Number two, take ownership. And number three, respond versus react. And if you use that three, two, one evaluation, your response, your next step is going to be far more effective. The next step, the fourth one, and this is the final one, is you got to take action. You just got to jump straight back into action mode because the longer you sit in that place of sorrow, right, the longer you wallow in the disappointment, the longer you sit there in the, the wreckage of the catastrophe, so to speak, the less time you have to actually get moving. And my friends, that's the most important asset you have in your life is time. You could lose all the money you have and get it right back in the same day. I could give you $10,000 in cash. You could stick that big wad of cash in your pocket, walk out the door, drop off your, drop out of your pocket and have it flow away into the wind and you could make that $10,000 back in an hour. But if you sit down and watch an hour of The Bachelor, you can never get that hour back. I don't care who you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how good looking you are, how influential you are. You can never get time back, but you can get money back just like that. And so understand the priority here. The priority is on your time over your money. Time will lead to money. And if you do it right and you build your business, you can actually get more time when you make more money. That's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother topic on a whole nother DDOA. But suffice it to say this, what you do next in the face of a catastrophe or chaos or anything that sets you back or disappoints you or pisses you off or breaks your heart will make absolutely set the trajectory for the next chapter of your business or your life. So when the chaos ensues, when the crap hits the fan, when the catastrophe hits, are you going to be the eye of the storm or are you going to be that plastic bag that gets blown away in the wind? It's entirely up to you. The most important thing is to know, step one, deal with the emotion, give yourself no more than 30 seconds to be spun up and pissed off. Step two, take ownership, commit at that point and really every point in your business day or your life to, to take ownership, to not be a entrepreneur, but instead be an entrepreneur, be a business owner. Step three, respond versus react. And how you respond is use the three, two, one evaluation that I taught you just now. What worked, what didn't work, and what might ha you have to do differently. And then step four, get into action. Take the action in the moment, even if it means picking up the phone and calling your mentor, even if it means just writing out what your next, what you think the next step might be, might need to be. Do something productive that's going to move you forward as, as opposed to keeping you stuck and stagnated. That's it. That's how you can be much more effective in your business and in your life, by the way, when you take full ownership and become that professional entrepreneur that we're here to help you develop into so that you can achieve everything you want to achieve in your business and in your life. All right, my friends, well, that does it for today. If today's topic landed for you, give me a five in the chat box. I just want to make sure that this, uh, this made sense, that, some, that you guys got some stuff from this, and know this. If you know folks that are struggling, share this message with them. Get them connected to the, to the EMP community and let them know, hey, this is a community of supportive people. This is not just a bunch of rah-rah, pat each other on the back and tell each other it's going to be fine. That's not how we roll. We are people that support each other and take each other to that next level, that next rung on the ladder, that next altitude. And if you want to fly high, fast, and far in this business, make sure you stay connected here, attractionmarketing.com, EMP, uh, elitemarketingpro.com, and get connected to the person who invited you to this. Start building a relationship and a communication with them and start being more connected to this community because we are here to help and here to serve. 
All right, guys. I see lots of fives in here. Totally love it. Appreciate you guys. All right. I'm out of here. Stay tuned tomorrow. We're going to have another awesome um, mentor coming out here, sharing some great news with you, great information with you, great value with you. Come here each and every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for your 15 minutes of inspiration, education, and motivation. And remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, and fly far. We'll see you guys soon.